Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah Skelly and this is part two of the Rhinebeck series for 2018. In just a minute I'm going to be joined by my friend Kristen Judkins of Gilead Fiber Farm and we're going to discuss our Rhinebeck experiences together. But before we do that I just wanted to make an announcement and point out that there are now several items available in the shop and you can go uh, find those on gagehillcrafts.com. Um, the first one is a pattern for the Bethel hat. This has been out for a couple of weeks, and if you sign up for our newsletter, you can get a copy of this pattern for free. It's featured in two different yarns. Um, the first option is the Green Mountain Spinnery Music, or Music, um, and uh, it's a lovely textured yarn. It has some tonal variation to it because it's dyed in the wool, and so you get these different flecks of color. Um, and this hat is available in three sizes. So this is the small or the youth size. There's an adult medium, which is the one that I've been wearing in several videos. And then there is an adult large. And this uh, sample was knit up in Mohonk and that's by Jill Draper Makes Stuff. Um, she has just released an, a fresh batch of Mohonk in her store. And so I'll link to her in the show notes. And um, if you buy the, if you get the Bethel hat pattern, um, which again is going to be a free download if you subscribe to our newsletter, or if you go ahead and purchase it, um, you'll be able to get a discount on the matching mitts that I am uh, in the process of designing right now. So these are going to be some fingerless mitts that will match the texture on that hat. And this will be coming out in just a couple of weeks. The other item that I have uh, available now are the kits for the forest floor cowl. So this is inspired by the ferns and the trilliums that grow in the woods behind our house. And the technique um, to get this two color effect uh, is double knitting. And so you can see that these are also reversible. Um, here it is in the mushroom colorway. And so you can wear it with the dark side out or the light side out. Um, the kit comes with enough yarn to make the full size or you can also make two half size, and these can also be worn as headbands. Um, and there's more information about these on the website. Again, I'll link to that in the show notes. And then the third line of items um, that are now available are, is our, the first in our line of skincare. So I've been working on these natural skincare products. I've mentioned them in previous episodes, but these are now available. So we have a solid lotion bar, and this is great for travel. Um, it's great to keep in your knitting bag or your backpack or your desk at work and you can just apply it um, wherever you need it. Pop the, the top off and, and rub it right on. Um, I always apply a little bit of this before I sit down to knit. And then the other item is a natural moisturizer. It's more of a cream. Um, and this is just one that I've been using myself. And these are both tallow and lard based. So they're animal fats, they're highly skin compatible, they're all natural, and I get the fats from local farms in Vermont, and um, they're from 100% grass-fed animals. So the animals are really well taken care of, and your purchase supports not only Gage Hill Crafts, but also local farmers um, around in our area. So take a look at those. Let me know if you have any questions about them. I'm happy to answer those and they are available now in the shop at Gage Hill Crafts. One more announcement, one more pattern. Um, the poncho that I'm wearing and that I wore at Rhinebeck, if you saw me there, um, this pattern is also in the final stages of proofreading and photos and will also be out soon. So um, if you haven't already, go ahead and follow us on Instagram or subscribe to our newsletter and you'll get all the details um, about the poncho pattern the fingerless mitts, and other upcoming projects as soon as they're available. Thanks so much. Enjoy the interview. And after uh, my talk with Kristen, I'm going to have some more footage of Rhinebeck, including a humulus sweater roundup. Thanks a lot for, to everybody for watching. And to those of you that I met and agreed to be on video, a special thanks to that. Enjoy, and we'll be back with more beer, more recipes, and other crafts fiber arts and interviews. Thanks a lot. I'm back with part two of our Rhinebeck 2018 roundup and I have a special guest with me. This is Kristen Judkins. Hi, thanks for coming. 
Anytime. Um, those of you who have just joined our channel, welcome. Thanks for subscribing. And um, go back and uh, look at Kristen's interview. That's the Gilead Fiber Farm interview. Um, okay. And yeah, that was a lot of fun. So great to have you back on the show. Um, and I did. I talked about some of my purchases in the last episode that I recorded by myself, but I have a few more. Um, but before we get into purchases... Um, I want to just talk a little bit about our, our trip down and, and how we made it down. I don't think either one of us was really planning to go this year. Correct. We, um, I, I was complaining to a friend of mine, uh, Jane, from Fulham Meadow Farm, that, oh, it's going to be another year where Renbeck goes by and I don't get to participate. And she goes, well, I'm, you know, I'm doing an Airbnb for the Coopworth um, Breed Association and I'm in charge, so you can come crash on the floor. <laughs> I was like, really? Wait a minute. This is sounding this is sounding plausible. Um, but then I kept bugging her and saying, well, you know, I really don't want to drive down by myself. It's kind of a long ride. I'd love to have like a co-pilot. You know, anybody anybody coming? They're like, well, they're all coming from other parts of the country, so there's really nobody nobody we can get. And then at the Sheep and Wool Festival, she came up to me and she said, maybe I can get Kristen to go. I'm going to go work on her. <laughs> So then she came and talked to you. <laughs> she did. She pastored me quite a bit. Yeah. And finally she said, you know, you have a place to stay and Sarah needs someone to ride with her. And I hadn't been in a long time and I was supposed to be doing a farmer's market that mm -hmm. day in Norwich, Vermont. And it was going to be my last one of the season. So I thought, oh, I really can't blow it off. And my usual Rhinebeck buddy was working. So, yeah. I, but she made it sound really fun and exciting. And then mm -hmm. I saw you and I was like, oh, yeah, it would be fun to try traveling with Sarah. Yeah, because we've known each other, I would say, for at least eight years, but just sort of tangentially through the sheep community, yeah, the Vermont peripherally. community. Yeah, <laughs> not not um, yeah. on a daily basis or anything like that. But yeah, so so thanks for driving down with me. That yeah. was well, super cool. Obviously, it was cool because... I got to do. I got more farmers markets lined up, so I don't have, didn't have to do that one. And my right. farm sitters were available. So everything fell into it place. It was like kismet. Yeah, it's like you gotta go now. Okay. And then I got super excited. Yeah, I did too. I was so worn out planning for the sheep and the Vermont sheep and wool festival. I sort of wasn't. I was like, don't even think about Ryan Beck. And then about four days before Ryan Beck, I got really sick, <laughs> and I was trying to beat this cold. But I was like, nothing is going to stop me. I told Rick, I was like, I don't care if I've got the plague. I don't care. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to go in the car. Um, but we made it. And it was great. It was great to um, share the B&B with all the Cooper folks. I want to give a special shout out again to Jane Beauchamp of Fulham Meadow Farm and uh, Marianne Dubé of that Mountain View Mountain Coopers, View Coopers yeah. yes. Mountain View Coopers, we'll link to them in the show notes. Um, but you guys were especially kind to let us tag along and, and you know, crash on the floor and, and hang out. Um, and it was really cool to meet all the other Coopers ladies, too, and absolutely. share some shepherding tales and yeah. notes and things. That's yeah. always nice. It's funny. I don't have, a lot of my close friends don't keep sheep. And so it's funny because I don't really get to talk shop with them. I do get to talk shop at the tannery with mm -hmm. other customers, but yeah. that's about it. But yeah, it's funny, you know, you're sitting around over a bowl of lamb stew in the evening and of course the, <laughs> the conversation turns <laughs> in that direction. And, and a lot of those women have a lot more experience. You know, I've been doing it for about 10 years, but yeah, same here. Um, yeah. So that was, that was super cool. So it was reassuring to hear from them that they would do what I was doing. Right, exactly. Oh, great. <laughs> I, I would have handled that problem okay if I had come across it. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah. So, yeah, so we rolled in, what, um, Friday afternoon or so, and yep. everybody else uh, in the Coopworth group was getting set up, but they came to the house and um, had a nice nice chance to kind of meet everybody and get to know them. And I did not sleep a wink Friday. I think it was that <laughs> it was partially because I was sleeping on a couch, but partially because it was that kid at Christmas thing, you know. Yes. Yeah tomorrow yeah and all my all my delayed excitement was pent up <laughs> and I was worried that I would forget something because I had a whole strategy of people I wanted to talk to and things I wanted to give away and you, you know, had a plan that's I, good I kind of had a plan yeah so so that's good, good to have a plan when you go to Rhinebeck I think so because it can you what if and it's really good to have a plan and, and be you able get, to stick to it because you get distracted it can be very easily oh shiny <laughs> and off you go and the plan what plan what plan I didn't have yeah. a plan Yep, exactly. What do you mean I didn't plan to buy seven fleeces today? Whoops. Oops. <laughs> I fell off the fleece wagon train. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, so funny. Mm-hmm. You fell off. I uh-huh. did fall off. Speaking. That's all right. Should we just talk about the police now and get it over Yeah, with? sure. I'm going to so, interrupt because... So, no, go for it. So, Kristen has sheep. I have home, sheep at home. And she has fleece at home. Lots and lots of fleece at home that needs to be skirted <laughs> and go to the mill. And she bought this fleece. And I went to the fleece. <laughs> well, I, I was proud of myself because I went to the fleece sale and I didn't buy any fleeces there. I convinced ever, other people to buy all the fleeces that I thought were really awesome and amazing uh-huh. and told them... Well, that's good of you. I'm enabling them. <laughs> And then I was wandering around the fairgrounds, and the Maple Frost booth kept on calling me, and I kept on seeing this. Can you see this here? In front hold of me? up, hold up a little bit closer to the camera. There, here. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this lusciousness. It's so lustery. I don't know if the camera's doing it justice, it's but it's lustery so shiny. and shiny, and it's got about an eight-inch staple length of curl that I can dye and over dye and it will turn into beautiful colors and then I'm going to make art yarn out of it mm-hmm. and maybe some felt and stuff because there is about eight and a half pounds of this lusciousness and wow. all the range of colors between the silver and the dark. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you can even over dye that dark color mm-hmm. and get kind of jewel tones and stuff. Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm looking forward to playing with this and I'm allowed to have it because it's very, very different from mm-hmm. the fleece that comes off my fin sheep. There you go. Which is lovely too. There's your but, justification. But there it is. And I'm going to share it with Susan <laughs> at the mill because we, we sell a lot of art yarn at the, at the mill. Right. And, and remind people which, which mill we're talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. The Mad River Fiber Arts and Mill in Waitsfield, Vermont. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I bought some locks. I don't have this breed of sheep either excuse the crinkling <laughs> but i bought this beautiful already washed and dyed uh because i'm lazy um <laughs> coopworth locks um from one of the ladies that was in the coopworth booth so this is from winter's past farm um coopworth dyed locks over dyed on gray and black so again you get a nice tonal and uh this is from a sheep called nanette so thank you nanette and thank you chris the shepherd um, and yeah, I'm going to try art yarn for the first time. I've never done any. Come over, we'll play together. Okay. <laughs> my spinning, my spinning class, um, uh, at Vermont Sheep and Wool kind of inspired me to, to play around a little bit more. So that's, that's pretty fun. So, so yeah. And then Saturday, um, at the festival, we didn't really spend a lot of time together. We kind of, we passed, you, passed you were really friend. good. Yeah. So, so my, one of my random back tips is bring a buddy. Or, or arrange to meet up with a buddy, especially if you're new. They can do things like tell you where the good bathrooms are mm-hmm. and like which food is the yeah. best and and that. Um, you don't necessarily have to stick together the whole day, but just having somebody to go, okay, you're here on the map and this is over there and make sure you, you hit this, all right? Good, go. Right. Um, that was really helpful. Yeah. yeah. So, so I... Um, I hit the book sale really hard. I'll talk about that in a second. And then I went to the podcaster meetup um, and I talked about all those people in the previous episode. So if you want to find out some more podcasts to listen to, especially knitting related podcasts, go check that one out. Um, But what did you do all day? I went visiting. I also went through the, the, the book queue to Mm -hmm. say my greetings to some people and share some stories with uh, the Mason Dixon ladies and uh, Dakota parks and, uh, then I went over to the cooperative place, pressed the ladies and talked because my friend Shannon Oki is there with oh, them. Yeah. So yep. I had to go and see them. Well, actually, I didn't get to see her until Sunday, which was mm-hmm. after the Instagram fiasco. <laughs> 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 um, but most of Saturday, I just kind of was bopping around. I was checking out knitwear. I was chit-chatting with people. Yep. I was trying to catch up with the Ash... Uh, the Ashford folks. Yeah. Because we're... Just, Mr. Ashford was there. He's always there, and usually yeah. I get a chance to see him, and now we are dealers for them at the mill, so oh, okay. Susan specifically asked me to go and find him mm-hmm. and say hello for her, and every time I went, they were either so jam-packed that I couldn't get in, or they weren't that weren't there, so... Yeah. I didn't really do any shopping on Saturday. I just... I bopped around. I looked at everything, and I looked mm-hmm. at everyone. I enjoyed the people watching tremendously and mm-hmm. counting the knitwear. Like, how many of that sweater did I see? Like, Great. Oh. And the yeah. butterfly... Uh, Shawl lady was there who I met at, at, at the Vermont Sheep. Oh, she was. Yeah. I wouldn't have known her and I'm sorry. I don't even know her name. We'll put it on the screen yeah, for you. We'll find um, it. the designer of the either. Papillon shawl that I mentioned last time. And I've also been posting about it on Instagram this week Yeah, as something that I'm going to knit with my one skein of Rhinebeck purchase. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see that. It's going to be gorgeous. It's going to be fun. Um, yeah, that's cool. So I, I, I had some strategery going too. I wanted to meet certain people, certain people at the podcaster meetup and there were a bunch of designers and I 
I don't usually buy knitting books. Um, I tend to buy one-off patterns as I want to knit them. Mm -hmm. um, but I fell down hard in the book aisle. Let me tell you, my credit card went woo. So. <laughs> Oh, you got the pom pom. I, I stuck. I stuck with my budget. I am very proud of myself for that. But yeah, so um, I thought you were being so good. You only bought one skating yarn. I was like, wow, she only. Like, oh no 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 no! <laughs> I spent so much money on books. So, I thought you got out of rhyme deck with only one skating yarn, and I was like, wow, no 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 no! So I wouldn't do that to you, vendors. I bought more stuff. <laughs> But yeah, so well, I started with Mason Dixon Knitting. Um, this is their latest field guide. You pro you probably know about these, um, but they're just little booklets around a theme. And the first few were around more of a theme center with multiple designers, and the last few have been single designers. So this is their Merry Making Guide, um, and it features um, beautiful, beautiful cowled and textured and color work things from Thea Coleman. Um, which you're probably all familiar with, but yeah, she's out of Boston and she just makes beautiful things. And the idea with this particular booklet is that um, it's all smaller projects that you can whip out a bunch of them for gift giving, um, if you're into that. So um, I had uh, Kay and Anne's their first book, Mason Dixon Knitting. I had their first two books. And I wanted to, get, I've been sort of hoping to run into them at one of these festivals. Um, and it's great when they're signing books, since they're kind of stuck there and they can't leave. <laughs> So they got to take a lot of that. They signed that, and then they signed this for me, and I got to meet Thea as well. Um, cool. And then, and then I went over to the pom pom table because my friend Amy Christopher's was there signing. It's this is she's Amy. in, she's in this issue, uh, which is spring 2018. And I said, so I said, which, which one are you in, Amy? And I wanted to get that one. And then I started looking at the table, and then I looked over, and Nora Gone was there. Oh, she and, was. I didn't notice and that, that. And that was terrible. So then I had to, of course, get the Nora Gone special edited mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. And then I had to get this issue because that cover sweater, oh my gosh. That cover sweater has been around like <laughs> Facebook and Ravelry and everywhere. And I swear to God, I saw four different versions of it walking around Rhinebeck. I didn't see anybody who had knitted it. And I was so impressed so that beautiful. they have like, you know, like not sample sweaters that they're already, like they've already knit them in so fast. They haven't been around that long and there's No, there but it's, it's like several people of them who are waiting gorgeous. for the teaser pictures. And then it's just like, okay, I'm going to buy the yarn as soon as the book that comes out I'm going to cast on and go and it just I just can't even imagine it's breathtaking that. I can't imagine it that. it's you know it doesn't look too awful I mean it's, it's all over color work we'll give it that I'm but, not I'm not so good at the color work but I'm a little it challenged is... <laughs> eh, we all have our strengths right but yeah I'm I'll I'm, cheer you along on that though because I want to see you knit that desperately I, I don't know if I'm even gonna make it but it's just it's lovely and the patterns are really well written and the pom-pom books also have other stuff so they have like cooking and other kinds of crafts so it's more of a magazine than it is just a straight-up knitting booklet right um, yeah and then I kept going so then I was like coming out I was like oh I saw Clara Parks and I've been wanting to get this book so this is a, a stash of one's own. It's stories about collecting yarn or not collecting yarn or what do you do with all your yarn or inheriting yarn or I, I can't believe I didn't think to bring any of my books to get them signed. And it's, it's But okay. I didn't have any room in my bags. You'll go back. You'll go back. <laughs> yeah. Kay, Kay Gardner made fun of me. She was like, because I whipped out the big Mason Dixon book and she's like, you're going to have fun carrying that around all day. And I was like, no, I parked close. I'm going to go put it in my car. She said <laughs> So that was fun. So I got Claire to sign this. But this is this is all the who's who of um of people have written little essays for this book. So um yeah. So that was cool. Had to have that one of course. And then my friend Jill Draper mm -hmm. has just come out with a new yarn. Um her Kingston yarn came out earlier this year and this is her own collection. She wrote all these patterns to feature the new yarn. And I like her it's patterns pretty fantastic. a lot. She's super funky in her designs, and her stuff is, like, not unnecessarily complicated. They're, I would not call her designs challenging. Um, they're just really neat. And she features women from Kingston, New York, as the models. These are all um, other entrepreneurs and business owners in town. So awesome. a great way to spread the love. Um, so, yeah. So I fell down with the books. But that's okay. The only book I actually purchased <laughs> was a kid's book because my neighbors just had a baby. So you got to do it. So if I can find it on my pile here. There we go. When your llama needs a haircut. <laughs> it's a really cute little book. And 
these are neighbors of my neighbor John who actually has several llamas and so this baby will grow up it's needing to know how llamas get let's haircuts. see it let's see a picture from inside let's see um let's find a good one oh bowl cut for your llama <laughs> <laughs> mine kind of end up with that because the share you know the llamas don't like having their faces touched. A perm or a buzz cut oh there you go <laughs> yeah it's fun and it's cute and it got signed over to the baby holy welcome to the world from the author oh nice super sweet yeah yeah books are a great baby gift books and baby booties that's, baby what, that's what they all get yeah. i usually me. do hats but yeah some little something i used to do hats i switched over to mm -hmm. to booties because my mom shared with me a really good easy fast mm -hmm. booty pattern that actually stays on the baby feet oh nice yeah nice i'll have to get that from you yeah so what else did you get? What else did I get? Oh, I got lots of things. Um, my friend Kristen, who's my usual Rhinebeck buddy and has been a shepherd of sheep and goats and alpacas and bunnies, has recently bought a new house and she has rehomed all her animals and she's feeling lonely without them. And the mother-in-law of the Marshmallow Farm, Jacob Farm guys, yes, yeah. does all these beautiful paintings that we saw at the Vermont Sheep and Wolf Festival. And when I got to Rhinebeck... And on Sunday afternoon at Rhinebeck, mm -hmm. it was still there. Oh, yeah. So her housewarming present was acquired. <laughs> now, now she has a sheep. <laughs> she has a new sheep to look at, a little baby sheep. And she doesn't have to feed it. Or and I discovered, <laughs> that, I discovered that she will do commissions. And so I'm going to consider commissioning her to do a painting of one of my own sheep. Yeah, I have a I have a sheep who's no longer with me, but I have pictures of her. I would love to get a portrait of her. She's so striking. That's cool. And the other things I bought, well, my gobs of garlic. You this is you. a thing that I buy every time I go to Rhinebeck. Yeah. And I brought some home for Kristen, and I brought some home for my farm sitters. Nice. And so that was a tip that I kind of ignored. But people were like, don't miss the, you know, the wine and the cheese building. And I just didn't have a chance to go through there. Oh. There's a whole building of like chocolate and local chocolate products and, and, and loads of different like little spice packages. And you can, mm. and they all have little tasting things and sausage and cheese and wine and uh, various distilleries are there too. And right. you can buy lamb. Well, and it's probably good I didn't um, go in there. <laughs> there was a silver jewelry place though in there that I thought of you. Like I was, mm -hmm. I meant to try to send you that way, but we were already like, on our way out when I yeah. finally saw you again and I knew you weren't going to go all the way back there. Yeah. No, that's all right. <laughs> but other than that, um, Susan, who is my, who she works at, owns the mill and she asked me to bring her some braids of unusual fibers mm. that we don't see at the mill too often. Mm -hmm. So from Bitsy Knits, I found this lovely organic Polworth. I just love Polworth. the purples and the greens. I love the Polworth too. And it's hard to come by around here because nobody has Polworth sheep in America really. Yeah. Um, they're starting to come around, and you can mm -hmm. get them from you can get them from um, Martin and Joy, the AI folks out in Oregon. Okay, but they're still very very expensive. Yeah, it's good for beginning spinners. I started on a potluck roaming, which is unfortunately out of business now. They had a Polwork, Polworth and Coriadale blend. It was so good for beginning spinner. It was very mm -hmm. forgiving and like very. Coriadale is great for beginning spinners. Uh, I love it. And most of the good Coriadale comes out of Australia, along yeah. with the Polworth. Well, that's where they were developed. Yeah. So this is a lovely braid of um, super fine merino and cashmere uh. <laughs> that I picked oh. up from the Lisa Souza people. They came all the way from California, Ooh. and that just like screamed at me from like across the hall. <laughs> and when I touched it, I knew it had to come home. And perfect autumnal colors, right? They're for, totally my colors. For Rhinebeck my friends, leaf season. My friends all looked at it and they said, that's how you, like, I've had bought roving like in these exact colors from you. <laughs> I know. I love the colors, but I don't have the cashmere. As long as, as uh, Stephanie Pearl McPhee calls them 70s appliance colors. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> this is another beauty from Lisa Souza. This is just yak and tussa silk top. It's undyed and natural, and I'm going to take that home, and I'm going to dye it. Yeah. And it's going to go with some of that Angora Marone, Merino roving that I swapped for at the mill. Yeah. And I'm going to I make will... something amazing out of it. I love this natural color. Um, it's kind of a champagne color. It may not be showing on camera yeah. perfectly, but the oh, my not gosh, great, it's so but... nice. Oh, and this, it, did you feel it? Yeah, I mm. did. I did. I Kristen was getting set up for this recording and she pulled that out of her bag and I told her like that almost went away right away. Like, wait a minute, didn't I bring my No no, I haven't seen your whatever it is. I did buy one other braided top that was um 
Polworth and Bamboo and Silk mm -hmm. in colors sort of like this mm -hmm. and more blue. Tealy. And Bubbo fell in love with it, so I gave it to her because she is wonderful. Aww. It's a nice house sitting present. Yeah. Yes. So and then and then you brought some non natural. I bought this very unnatural <laughs> white nylon <laughs> of all things. Yep. And I bought it because, as you can maybe see, it's very, very glittery and shiny, and it will take dye beautifully. Mm -hmm. So when I'm making my homemade bats or my homemade roving, I can dye some of this along with my wool mm -hmm. and my mohair and my bamboo and whatever else, and then I can have the sparkly bits. Yeah. Because for around the holidays, people like the sparkly gardens. Sure, but it's not, it, and it is shiny. Um, and it's going to add some twinkle, but it's not... It's also going to add some strength. It's Well, I was going to say it's ob it's not obnoxiously sparkly like Stellina and yeah. Angelina and yeah. all that stuff can be. Um, yeah. yeah. So and so cool. it, gives, it, will, it does tone down when you blend it with the wool. Mm -hmm. And it also gives it strength. It's like adding mohair or something. So if I'm going to spin something fine and somebody wanted to make socks out of it, say, right. or like, you know, tight gauge mittens or gloves yeah. or something... Yeah, they'll be they'll hold up more. Yeah, nice and hard wearing. And it just I don't see it all the time, and I've only ever seen it online, and I didn't want to buy it if I couldn't touch it. And mm -hmm. so this was my first opportunity to just like see it. It was in the booth I didn't by some fellow. I know they made such a thing. That's cool. I knew that they made it, but I, but I, like I said, if I can't touch it, I don't want to order it online. And mm -hmm. uh, this was actually I was talking to these people who had fins, and they had their booth there, and they had mm -hmm. all this beautiful stuff that they were selling, and they had a bin of this mm -hmm. hanging around. I feel like maybe got something else from them, but I don't think maybe not. But yeah, I got that from them. It was like this whole big bag was like three bucks. It's super right. cheap, and so I was like, well, why not? I'll play with it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's something amazing. that, um, like you said, you know, go with a plan and um, maybe have a shopping list, especially if you do have projects in your queue that you know you want. You know, make sure you know if you your have yardages. Projects, yeah, if you have projects you know, and you're that. looking to be inspired mm -hmm. by some colors or something, the way there's. There's so much yarn, but like some people just present the colors in ways that you wouldn't think of, and it will make you think of a new combination. Right. That will speak like, oh, I was looking for color work. Right. I was trying to figure out what colors to use in that like Icelandic sweater I wanted to make. Right. And I thought I wanted it to be, you know, red and green and orange, but right. I saw this like wall of yarn, crazy arrays. mustard color. Or something yeah, and it just that like I would normally would not have chosen, but or it you goes see good somebody, with this some, other a thing. sample yeah, yeah. that somebody's, or you see somebody walking around wearing a sweater, and you go, mm -hmm. "Oh my god, those colors are." And then you like for. tackle them, bear hug them, hold them on the ground, and say, "And say, hang on, I need a picture of that. <laughs> what did you make this?" <laughs> yeah. And the beauty of Rhinebeck is you can totally like manhandle people to get mm -hmm. information about their knitwear, and mm -hmm. nobody gets upset. Nope, no, nope. <laughs> people are flattered. They're like, yeah. "Oh," and they want to tell you all about. Oh, I'm wearing this, mm -hmm. and I'm wearing that. Speaking of which, I am wearing three of my own designs, and this was my outfit on Sunday. Yes, it was. And I know I look totally ridiculous, but, but it was, was a great too. conversation piece. Well, I don't really think all this goes together, but... It's knit weird. Yeah. It always, it's all knits. <laughs> it goes together. <laughs> but um, but the patterns for these, some are available, and the poncho pattern will be coming out soon. So we'll let yes. you know about that. Yes. Um, but speaking of knitwear, we both had projects we were working on. I was still chugging away on my Humulus sweater, which still working on um, and I got to interview um, a bunch of other people who had made that sweater and were modeling it so I'm going to show those oh, at, the end, at the end I'll do I'll do the kind of humulus sweater roundup cool um, but you were knitting on something in the car I was just I've been knitting I this is just a plain two by two red hat mm -hmm. that is being knit out of my own farm yarn that I spun at the mill from my own Stella and Atlas fleeces so it's Finn and Shetland cross wool. It's really, really soft. And I had it in my bag and I mercilessly made everybody touch it that stopped and talked to me at Rhinebeck, including so the Mason Dixon knitting ladies who swooned when they touched it. And I invited them to come to Vermont and that we would take them on a beer and yarn tour. Okay. When they come. Okay, so, Nan, we're, we're holding you to it. We're going to bug you until you come. I gave them my cards and stuff and I'm going to send them a, a, an annoying email. And I may even send them a package of yarn to, to, just, just, just bribe sort of, it. To Grease the wheels. Them a little bit. <laughs> I love it. This is so soft. Um, Shetland can be kind of crunchy. I have some crunchy Shetland yarn that I had made, and it's you know it's going to be rugged and it's going to be good, but this is really soft and bouncy. Yeah. And look at that twist. I don't know if you can see that twist, but that is just. Cool. And it's also cool as a shepherd to be able to talk to my other shepherd friends and mm -hmm. reassure them that actually if 
not only you, like our mill is good and I'm there and I'll keep an eye on things and I'll give you progress pictures of your stuff along the way. Right. Oh, you're good. I don't even do that with the tannery. People are like, when's my stuff ready? I'm like, I don't promise it to when just I say anybody, so. but you know, but when my friends, <laughs> but when I, when I'm working on a friend's thing, like when yeah. Kristen's CVM was going mm-hmm. through, mm-hmm. I took some pictures of that. Oh, and, that's nice. You know, it's nice because it's just nice. That's cool. And it's like, you know, the, the behind the scenes thing. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Right. Yeah. So I did a lot of pr- promotion for the mill while I was mm-hmm. wrapping around yeah. at Rhinebeck. I gave out, I probably gave out more mill cards than I did my own cards just because. Yeah. No, it's good. I mean, and People don't know about us yet. We've only been around for a couple of years. Right. Yeah. And it, and it can be hard to trust a new business. I mean, I found that when I was starting the tannery mm-hmm. too, a lot of people were interested, but then they kind of wanted to wait a year and, you know, just make sure that the first reports were good and, you yeah. know, maybe see some finished product and kind of well, believe in it more, you know, because like you said, it can be a black hole. You send your stuff off and then you're like, okay, that's all right. So, and I mean, I do understand the reticence too to right. go with somebody new because it is like your whole year's harvest, mm-hmm. you know, and if yep. it gets messed up, like you're kind of sunk. Yeah. You're so, behind a whole year. Yeah. So yeah, I do. I, I get it. Right. So that's <laughs> one thing. <laughs> one thing is that Rhinebeck is a great networking opportunity. So even if you're not going there to shop or you don't have a huge budget, you know, a lot of us don't, mm-hmm. um, don't feel like you have to spend a million dollars on products, maybe buy one or two nice things that you save up for or that are, that are special or you can't get other places, but you know, go talk to people. Yeah. Um, I spend a lot of time in the animal barns too. Yeah. And that's a great yeah. place to talk to shepherds mm-hmm. and people who are helping out with the animals and yep. just get, a you know. I kept, I, I wasn't even thinking about this, but you said that, and twice while I was standing in line for food, people would strike up a conversation, and they would find out I had sheep, and they'd be like, oh, so how hard is, this, is it to keep sheep, and blah, 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 and we, like, we would, like, have that, like, sheep 101 conversation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it was so cute. A hundred times I, over the weekend, I, for sure. <laughs> I don't know why I was expecting more people to have their own sheep there. I think I, it's default, right, because, right. like, a lot of people around here do, but, yeah, that was, that was fun. So, you know, ask questions, strike up conversations. Yeah, people are very um, friendly. They are. And my other tip is to bring something to give out. So whether it's your business card, whether it's a little sample, letting people pet your p- project, you know, have that thing that you can kind of give and you'll get back a lot too in return. I know. I'm going to bring mini skeins next time I go to Rainback, I think. That's a good idea. Or even just like two footers, like, yeah. you know, here's some samples. Just little samples. Yeah. They wet the whistle. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yep. Oh, um, and that, here's a, one, one last tip that I just now remembered. Oh, yeah. If you're a shepherd and you're going to Rhinebeck and you have a thing for fleeces, one thing that I used to do that I forgot to do this year, but what I normally do is mm-hmm. I take a lock from each of the bags of fleece that are in my back porch uh-huh. and I wash a little handful of all of them before Rhinebeck and I bring a little baggie with me with all the washed locks from my own flock in it. Nice. And I carry that with me and when I start to get like... And when I start to feel that urge to like go buy the fleeces, when I start like, I'm like, oh, this fleece is so beautiful, I pull my little bag out and I pull out my little wash locks and I go, oh, mine is just as nice as that. It's better. Right. I don't need that and I can walk away. Right. So <laughs> if you're a shepherd, bring a little samples of your own wash locks for your own self. Remind and yourself. also, and that's also a nice thing because when you meet other shepherds or if you're networking with people that you want to try to get, you mm-hmm. know, get on board, you can then let them feel your locks. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you, can give, you, can, you can give people a little something to fondle and that's right. they'll remember you better. That's right. <laughs> I like I like a lock, maybe like crochet hooked through the hole in a business card. There's an idea. Mm, mm, that's a good one, yeah. Yeah. Like you wouldn't be able to give out a million of those, but if you had 10 of them, you could strategically, yeah. Yeah, good idea. So, there you go. So, thoughts good. for next year. Yep. <laughs> Making exactly. notes already. Oh, so good. Because next year is the year of the fin at Rhinebeck, <gasps> and so I, I sort of feel that. like I have to go. Oh, you definitely have to go. I might have to go and be your buddy to, again, because yeah. I do have two fin sheep. I have a little mixed flock now, but mm-hmm. they're great. I love fin sheep. I know. And Susan wants to go next year. I'm thinking maybe we can get the the mill to sort of get a house, a mill house together mm-hmm. for some Vermont sheep There's people. Idea. There's an idea. So we'll start working on that soon. I love it. Yeah, the Vermont rep- representation there was awesome. Oh, yeah. We saw Michael Hampton, who I also have interviewed. Tammy mm-hmm. White, who yeah. I've also interviewed. She was there. She got a booth at the last minute. Yeah. It looked fabulous. Yes. Um, Did you see? Cloverworks Farm was there. I didn't get to see her, but Cloverworks I know she was there. there. Um, Ellen from Ellen's Half Fight Farm was there. She was, and cool. so was um, Terry from Snowshoe Farm Alpacas. Uh huh. And um, Lori from Will You Farm, one of the yeah. Mountain Fiber folk, the Cormo lady. Oh, okay. Um, who else I did I her. see? Um, oh, 
Dave and Kathy Paul, mm -hmm. the Merlin Tree, they were there. Yep. Um, yeah, there's tons of Vermont people there. I'm missing somebody else. <laughs> Naomi was there for with holiday fibers. Uh huh. So I'm just looking at my notes, and we have two funny stories to tell. Do you want us to tell your Instagram story first? <laughs> So, so yeah. I came home, so I went to Jill Draper's open house after the Saturday. So I got, I got back to the group house kind of late and I kind of waltzed in, was like pouring myself a beer and whatever and saying hi. And Krista goes, you'll never believe what's happening on Instagram. And I was like, what? <laughs> so on Saturday at just a four or five o'clock I had um, gone back over to the Cooper ladies booth to be sure that I could catch my ride back to the house because Sarah had gone to see Jill Draper mm -hmm. and their booth was small and crowded so and it was late in the day and my feet were killing me so I went around the back of their building where their booth was and I was perched on these two little plastic crates you know you have to sit mm -hmm. on the edge of them so they don't collapse so right there was no, it wasn't very comfortable and I had all my, <laughs> had my fleece and my basket and all my stuff and I was tired it was the end of the day and my feet were hurting and I was just sitting there hanging out minding my own business and I started noticing this big hubbub going on over in front of the building and, uh -huh. I, was like, what are these? and I could see like shiny pants and like bright color sweaters and I was like who are those people what are they doing and I sort of peeked around to just sort of like to see if I could get a look and I could just see their backs and I was just kind of like oh well whatever and I was uh -huh. too tired to get up and go look so I just went back to my seat and I didn't think much of it and then um when we were back at the house I got a little Instagram notification from my friend Sarah mm -hmm. <laughs> in Vancouver <laughs> saying Oh my God, Gillian Goats, is that you in picture too? And so I went to look at the post and it's a lovely picture of Pamela Wynn and Christy Glass mm -hmm. um, in the like unicorn sweater and the thing and, you know, sweater, fairly famous knit designers. <laughs> and in the corner behind the building, you can see this little head poking out. <laughs> and in, you swiped a picture too and it's that it picked up and it was me sitting there looking, looking like a get off my lawn, crazy old lady stalker. <laughs> whatever photo bomber and there was this whole big long list of comments about the photo bombs and like two or three people actually recognized me and made comments that she's a nice shepherd you would really like her it was brilliant it was, it was just brilliant. really really funny and you were sitting there at dinner going what do I do? I'm like, just roll with it. Just roll with it. <laughs> Embrace and, it. Love it. And so I did. I, yeah. I copped to it. I admitted to what was going on and everybody laughed. And then um, yesterday when I was at the mill mm -hmm. and I had been picking this beautiful Jacob and mohair blend through the picker and I had to go to the picker room to condition it. Mm -hmm. So when you open the door, it's a big room just full of fluff. Fluff, yeah. And so I made Kathleen videotape me flub, jumping around in the fluff, and then I tagged Pamela Wynn <laughs> to say, like, I'm much happier when I'm in my natural environment. <laughs> right. <laughs> to show uh, that I wasn't really a total, like, creepazoid freako. <laughs> well, it wasn't your fault you were in the in the thing. It's one thing to, like, sneak up behind people when they're taking pictures. Well, I think people think that you do that on purpose. I think they think if you're in that picture, in that position, that you did it on purpose. And right. And it really, no, really wasn't No, you were far away. You were actually quite far away, but it was just a funny thing. Oh, so, well. But she loved it. She loved my, my video, and mm -hmm. she's now following me on Instagram. See? And I have a bunch of new followers on Instagram. As I told Kristen, no attention is bad attention. That's so if you're away. curious about it, you know, go look for at Pamela Wynn on Instagram and you'll probably yeah. find it. Yeah, we'll, we'll link to her. Uh, that's pretty good. And then our other thing was a was an adventure we had late on Saturday night. So um, oh, right. one, of the lady, one of the ladies who's in the, what I keep calling the Coopworth contingent in my head, um, she wasn't staying at the house with us because I think she lives locally, but she came by to say hi to everybody and she had dinner with us on and Saturday. had dinner and and then she you know she was like okay good night and and Chris and I were like the last ones up everybody else was pooped out gone to bed early and we're like I'm just like just slipping into bed pulling up the covers mm -hmm. and we hear knock knock on the door and I get up and she's like I'm stuck. She, the the house had a steep driveway and she had pulled off to the side I of the grass. I stayed on my couch way, 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 way. I was uh, pretending to be asleep in the hopes that I wouldn't mm. be <laughs> called into duty. 
And then uh, Chris got up and she tried to help. And then she came in and she got me and Kristen. And she said, this is more than a one person job to get her out of here. So, um, yeah. So we, of course, threw on whatever was handy, our clothes, and and ran outside and, and did get her out. Took us a couple of tries. But then <laughs> once she was up the driveway, we kind of high-fived and hugged. We stepped back and looked and we were just covered in mud. <laughs> Head to toe mud on the hand knit sweaters. Yep. And yep. I had to. I was scrubbing my boots down this morning before yeah. I went left to go to work. You got it worse than I did because you were in the the very front, and yeah. I was in the. I was kind of in the back door yeah. while pushing. Um, I got it like waist down, so it was okay. Yeah. We just you know, right. washed everything out for an hour in the sink. Wool washes just fine. <laughs> okay it was a lot of rinsing because the kitchen yeah. sink didn't have a stopper so i had to use the bathroom sink and it was yeah. a little oversized for that <laughs> <laughs> but the sweater is fine i wore it yesterday good it, good. it needed a wash anyway so yeah it's all right <laughs> got it back into nice shape and... but that was funny yeah <laughs> so but i guess it's a good thing when you're staying with a house with a bunch of people because people have different skill sets and you know and you, still somebody does get stuck those trucks <laughs> probably well that's but okay those people are sleeping so yep we got her out um, and then I think the only other thing I want to mention, oh, two things actually. One is that I stopped at a great restaurant, uh, called Boysen's in Kingston for dinner that night. So before I came oh. back, um, and there it's like a speakeasy and I was, I was overtired and I knew I still had the Jill Draper event to go to and a log drive home. And so I didn't get a cocktail, but I would have really wanted one, um, but they had really good food. So I highly recommend them next time you're going down to Rhinebeck. I'll link to them again in the show notes. Uh, Boysen's, it's a, I don't know, it's just a really groovy, funky kind of place with excellent food. Um, and then on Sunday, we had sort of a quieter time. Yes. Again, again, kind of went our own ways. That's when I did more of my shopping. Um, so I picked up my yarn. I got my... Um, that's when I did all my shopping. Yeah, my locks for, for my art yarn. <laughs> and I think that's good, too, because you can give yourself um, time to kind of think about what you want to get or, or like count your money and see if you have any money left <laughs> and go back and get things. Obviously there's some vendors that do, you know, special edition stuff that's going to sell out quickly. Mm -hmm. So you have to see them early on Saturday, but if you can wait till Sunday, the lines aren't as crazy. There's not as much um, of a fray to get into certain booths and, I don't know, it's just an, a gentler shopping experience. Absolutely. I, think. I don't even try to shop on Saturday because it's really too crazy. Unless yeah. I see something that like, well, like that fleece that I walked by seven times and, when I walked by one time and there was somebody looking at it and pawing at it, think, looking at it like they might buy it, I sort of paused. And when that person walked away, I was scrambling in and got it. Right. And by the end yeah. of the day on Sunday, I was thinking about maybe she can get a white one too so I could have some that I could die. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, no, no, step away <laughs> from the full fumes. Well, I like, I mean, you know, obviously white will show off the colors really well, but I liked over dying over gray. Well, and there is there um, is some even lighter gray in it than right. what I have here. I just grabbed a handful because I didn't want to totally yeah. pollute your house with the smell of stinky fleece. No, no, I like the smell. I mean, I think if you're shepherd, you kind of have to like the smell. Yeah. I don't like laying well, all over everything necessarily, but that's okay. But it is nice on the hands. Mm -hmm. Um, And then so Sunday we, we hopped in the car about midday because we both wanted to get back sort of for supper time. We had people making dinner for us. Hi, nice farm sitter people. Um, Shout out to Bubbo and David. Yeah, and Rick. <laughs> Thanks for holding down the fort. Um, but we had one quick detour um, at a beer place, which was a lot of fun. The was, Beer Diviner. The Beer Diviner. <laughs> this is a tiny little place, and it's in the middle of nothing. But I don't even remember what road we were on. I'll link to it and put it on uh, a map so you can you can figure it out but it's just it's sort of like a homebrew guy who just decided to go ahead and get his beer license so he could sell his homebrew um you know really yeah. small place small place homebrew i think they had pizza pizza and they had some live music yep they had a big tv with mm -hmm. like the football game or something on yep but you know but it was good beer we rolled in and we, ta we were tasting our beers and as as we were and we bought some stuff and as we were leaving about three or four more cars pulled in the parking lot. So he's got a steady business going. Yeah. But so, uh, so. His brew, it was delicious. He was. Uh, yes, it was. I would have brought the growlers to show you, but I sent them home with David and Bubba. It's okay. Um, yeah, and Rick and I, I think, are going to taste. I, I bought beer for Rick. Um, so he and I are going to do some on screen tastings in the next episode. We'll, we'll do that for you and share some notes. Awesome. Um, yeah, but so, so pay attention to those. 
you know, those out of the way things. If you have a little bit extra time and you're going on a road trip, you know, when you see a sign that says beer and a big arrow, just turn, make the turn and go do it. Change your co-pilot to look for the signs. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Kristen was really good. She's like, we should, we should turn left right here. Like right now, like turn left. I was like, okay. <laughs> Um, cause it can be hard for me. Sometimes I get like one track mind and like, I just want to get home, but that was definitely worth stopping. So. It didn't take that long. No, no, no. They don't. They never do. <laughs> it's more, you build it up in your head and you're like, I don't want to do this, but it's always worth it. You know, I've done it for wool too. You mm -hmm. know, it's oh, like sure. you don't, you don't know what they sell, but it just says wool and mm -hmm. an arrow. Just <laughs> That's when you find the best stuff. Yes. That's when you yes. find like that Wednesday Dale fleece. Just like mm -hmm. the golden fleece that yeah. Wednesday Dale. Oh. <laughs> the sky's part. <laughs> Your wallet opens. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just take it all. That's good stuff. <laughs> so yeah. And I don't know, um, you know, this was my first year at Rhinebeck. Um, so thanks for being an off awesome travel buddy for that. I don't Thank know you. that I'll be able to go every year. I don't even think it's necessary, but um, I would definitely put it on the hit list of like things to do, you know. While you, while you still can go anywhere, um, it's definitely yeah. up there. Um, check it out and plan accordingly. So thanks again for joining me. Oh, thank you. It was an absolute blast. Yeah. And uh, we'll have more um, Wooly Goodness. Stay tuned. I'll, I'll have the Humula sweater interviews right after this. And like I said, we'll do beer reviews and get back into cooking and all kinds of other things. I know you guys aren't all necessarily knitters. Um, so we'll have more stuff on the channel for you in upcoming episodes. Thanks a lot. definition on their wool. Yeah, and really you, nice. you did a really nice job with your color work. I can really see the pattern. Thank you. And I made it with Spin Cycle, Dream State on the top. Okay. And the body is Utopia. Very nice. And I used probably 900 yards of the main color. Hi everyone, Hi. I'm here with Jory. Jory, uh, and she's got her Cumulus in a different color combination than we've seen. So tell us about your sweater. What's it knit with? So the gray is Woolstock and the red is Malabrigo Rias Ravelry Red. Oh, and nice. it was a really fun knit. I really liked making it. So we're here with Diana, Irene, and you're wearing my current favorite sweater. I noticed you chose slightly different colors. So tell me about your sweaters. What yarn, what colors did you choose? I used Knit Kicks, Will of the Andes, and this is their like natural series. Dove Heather, yeah, and I don't remember. All right, we've got a million colors. I yeah. like that orange. Too. Knitting your sweater. So, what did you make that out of? Uh, Satan's classic wool. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. There's been a bunch of budget options. It's nice to get a sweater yes. for you know under sixty dollars. Oh yeah, it only good. costs about thirty actually. That's great because of coupons at AC. There you go. There you go. And I love your color choice. Thank you. The cranberry goes really well. Have Carol Foster from Foster Sheep Farm. Okay, where are you all located? Skyville, New York. This, this is your yarn. It's our yarn from our sheep. Uh, we raise uh, these are natural colored longs, and they are Wensleydale cross. Okay. Um, and we also raise Romneys. The white is the Romney. Mm -hmm. But the um, the mill in Greenwich, New York, the mm -hmm. Hill Fibers spins our yarn. Oh, great. Yeah. 